When we add a controller to the system and then add a user, i.e. an access card or fingerprint, etc., as default, all users are permitted access to all doors at all times. However, many systems need to be set to limit users to only be allowed to access selected doors between certain times. This is what we call access groups or access levels. On our system, we can set up access levels of who are allowed through what doors at what times from the access control option on the home menu screen. From the access control options, we can set time zones, which is hours of the day a user can be granted access, and access time, which is adding the time zones to the days of the week, access areas, adding selected doors to the access times, and access groups, grouping access areas into groups so they can easily be added to users. As default, there's one time zone that includes a time zone of 24 hours. This is used as default when adding a new user as it doesn't limit any access. To add additional time zones, you click on the Add Time Zone button. This will open a new option window. You first need to provide it a database reference number. In our example, we will use 0001 and then we'll give it a name. For this first example, I'm going to add it a name of no times. And we won't add any time, so this will restrict of when users can't access doors. Once I click on Apply, it adds it to the system and then allows us to add additional time zones if required. On this next example, I'm going to add the reference number of 0002 and then give it a name of maybe the office hours, for example, 8am to 5.30pm. I'm going to use this of when cards can be used at selected readers. So I'm going to select card and then in the time zone, I'm going to enter the required times being 8am to 17.30 hours, which is 5.30pm and then click on Apply to apply this. Once we've added all the time zones we require, we can then close the Add Time Zone window. And as you can see, we've now got three different time zones that we can use within the access time that we'll look at now. The access time allows us to use the time zones we've just generated and add them to some days of the week. As default, there is an access time loaded, which has got all days set for the default time zone, which is 24 hours a day. I'd recommend not to change any of the defaults, but we can also add some more if required. To add a new access time, we go along and we click on the Add Access Time button. This opens a window the same as it did with a time zone, allows us to program in. In this case, I'm going to use reference number 0001. I'm going to give it a name called No Times, um, No Days, and under each day, I'm going to select the time zone of No Times. That means this will use this of when someone is never going to have an access to a particular door. And then once we're programmed each day, we then click Apply to apply it. Once it's applied, we can then move on and select another access time. In this example, we'll use reference number 0002, and I'm going to give it a name of office hours, um, Monday to Friday. So this would be used for when staff can access particular doors. We go through each day, and Sunday we won't give them times. Choose Monday, Tuesday, etc. we'll give them the office hours. Now you'll notice on the right-hand side, we see a graphical representation of the times once they're added. Add Wednesday, we'll add Thursday and Friday, of course. And then Saturday and holidays, we'll leave that set for no times because I won't have access during that time and then we click apply. Once this has been applied, we can then move on and add any more access times required. We'll just do one more example. I'll give it the next reference number, 0003. I'll give it a name as, say, Managers Times. And Managers we might be allowed in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So therefore, we go along and we select each day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc., or the default times, which is 24 hours. And we're adding the days here. 
and then we go down to Sunday and also holidays. Select the default time, which is 24 hours, and we apply this. Once we've finished all the access times, we can close that window, and you'll notice that we've now got all the access times in the background here. We can now go and group them and put them to access areas. There's no default, so to add an access area, we click on Add Access Area button. This then opens a programming window, much the same as Time Zone and Access Times. Now at this stage, it's a good idea to have a list of all the card readers so we know what doors are going to allocate to what staff. As we can see here on the right hand side, on my demo here, I've got three panels with four card readers connected to each and we'll run through this when we program them. We can then give it a reference number and a name. In this example, I'm going to use reference number 0001 and I'll call it sales staff and we'll allocate doors that the sales staff can access. We first need to identify what doors can the sales staff access on this first controller. So in our example, we're going to give them access to the car park entrance through the front door, car park exit, but they can't access through the manager's door. So programming access areas in the controller, we selected the controller and then in the access time section, we select each door for that controller of what time, in this example, the sales staff will be allowed to access through each door. Therefore, in our example, through door one, which is the car park entrance, we select the time zone that they can access, in this case, office hours. We then go to door two, which is the front door, and select what time they're allowed to go in. Again, we'll select office hours times. Door three, which is the manager's office, which they're not allowed in, Therefore, we'll select a time zone of no times and no days, so they can't access through that door at that time. And the last one is car park exit. We'll give them 24-hour access to get out, and we can then apply that. Once applied, we can then add another access area group and give it a reference number, number two. We're still doing sales staff. We move down and select the next controller in the list and we'll program what doors sales staff can get through on this next controller. On this next controller, door one is the sales office, so we give them what time they can get through the sales office, which would be office hours. R&D office, we don't give them any time, so we're not allowed through there. General manager's office is the same, we won't give them any times. And canteen entry, yes, we will give them time, we'll give them office hours to get into the canteen. We then apply that. Once that's applied, we can then move on and select our next controller. In this case, it will be demo training. And we can go and add our next group, give it a reference number, number three. And we then select what doors sales staff will be allowed through in this next controller. In our example here, sales staff will be allowed through the admin door during office hours. They will be allowed in the storeroom during office hours, but they're not allowed in the warehouse entry, so we'll give them no times. And they won't be allowed through the warehouse exit, so we won't give them any times in that either. Once this is programmed, we can then click Apply to save it. Then once we've programmed all the sales staff, we can move on for another group of staff. We can do the next reference number. In this example, it's going to be 0004, and we'll change the name from sales staff to, say, warehouse staff. We then follow the same procedure of selecting the first controller and what doors can the warehouse staff access, car park access. We might give them, say, 24-hour access because they might be called in after hours to do some packing, for example. We then go through door two, the front door. We give them the same time, 24 hours again. On here, warehouse um, staff won't be allowed in the manager's office, so we give them no time. And car park exit, the same 24 hour access, and we save that. We then go on to the next reference number, follow on the same procedure. We select the next controller down, still for warehouse staff. We go to the next controller, Sales office doors, they're not allowed in, so we don't give them times. R&D times, R&D door, we don't give them any times. 
The general managers, we can't get in, but the canteen, they can get in, but only during office hours. We then apply that, move down to the next controller, and same principle, we give it the next reference number, which in our example is 0006. We then select the admin door, they're not allowed in, don't give them any times. Storeroom, we don't give them any time, but warehouse entry and warehouse exit, we give them 24 hour access. Apply that and then we can close once we're finished programming. Once this is closed, we can then see our access areas we've programmed along with the access times allocated to each group. Now we can group all these together by clicking on the access group tab. To program access groups, we do the same as we did for the others. We first give it a reference number, and this example will be the first one, so it'd be 0001. We're going to group all the sales staff together. And we then select what access areas for that group. In this case, it's the three sales staff. We apply that and we then add the next reference number, which would be number two, and we'll group the warehouse staff together. Type in warehouse staff, untick the sales, and we'll now group the warehouse staff together and then apply that, which then adds them together. Once we close that programming window, we can then see the groups that we've just added. It's these groups that we then add to users' cards or fingerprints example of what readers or what doors the user is allowed through during what times. Now before we add them to a user, what we need to do is download them to the controllers. To do this, we can either add each group individually by selecting them here, or alternatively, we can click on the top of the column and then select them all or deselect them in one go. Once they're selected, up on the top right hand corner of the window, there's a button there called Send to Terminal. So we click on this, which then opens up a list of all our controllers. We then select what controllers we want to download to. So we select the particular controllers and then we click on the Send button. And once it is sent, under the status, we'll see that success is when it's being downloaded. Once we've programmed all the access groups and downloaded into the controllers, we can then go back to the home page and click on Users and allocate users to these groups. We then select the user that you wish to program. That opens up their profile. And under the Access Group option for that user, you'll then see the groups that we've just generated. On this example, this person is a warehouse staff, so we'll click warehouse staff, modify their record, and then move on to the next person and do the same. In this case, we just select this person as a sales staff, modify their record, and so on. Once all the user's profiles have been modified, we then go click on send to terminal, select the terminals we wish to download, and then download them to those controllers. Once it's been downloaded, users will only be permitted to access through the doors that they're selected during those times. If access is attempted during outside those times, the result will be no permission and it will log in the event log as no permission. Success, of course, will mean that they can get through that door. This concludes our instructional video on how to program access levels, but if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact customer service at customerservice at nest.com.au or visit our website on www.nestcorporation.com and we'll sure be able to help you. Thank you.